Okie dokie, we are looking at behaviorism still, and we are looking at some applications, class uh, called conditioning, as it applies to actual gosh darn human beings. Imagine that. So we're looking at classical conditionings as it involves an emotional state, the conditions or behaviors that produce an emotional reaction. Think about the physical reaction you get when you hear a dentist drill. Overt reactions to past experience. Now what does that have to do with you as a teacher? Well think about this, whether you're coming at, at this from the point of Maslow or a behavioristic have a law. You want to pair warm, nurturing teachers with the classroom so that the classroom becomes a safe, nurturing place. Maslow says, unless you have feelings, uh, uh, unless your lower needs are met, safety, self-esteem, etc., etc., you can't get to the higher needs, which is learning, self-actualization, etc., etc. So if you have a cold teacher or a classroom that children feel threatened in their esteem, they feel like failures, they are going to associate that with a painful thing. They don't want to come to school. Kids aren't idiots. Think about this also. The student with a learning disability experiences failure and humiliation, is frustrated. So school and everything related to school creates this negative physical reaction. You can even see this sometimes as adults enter the school. Sometimes you can imagine that their past experience is still creating these negative feelings inside. So, students with learning disabilities tend to have more absences, more sickness. Think about reading instruction with these basal manuals, these boring stories, this drill and skill, asking them not to read for pleasure, but to regurgitate story details, to sound out nonsense words out of any meaningful context. Children learn not to love reading. Reading becomes associated with this boring, horrible stuff not anything worth fun. The result of that is less voluntary reading outside of school. So certain types of reading instruction, and I call it instruction in quotes because it's not really instructions, it's just doing something to kids, makes it less likely that they will do voluntary reading outside of school. And the amount of voluntary reading, and I could cite you this, is highly related to students' academic achievement. Now, do high achievers read more, or do they uh, achieve more because they read? Well, it's probably a little of both. We don't know. It's correlation. It does not infer causation, but they are correlated with each other quite strongly. Think about high taste stakes testing, if you will, the tension. It becomes not about learning. It becomes about testing. Teachers are less likely to explore or experiment, they spend this valuable time preparing for tests, and as you will see with your students, it is a horrible experience for these kids. They shut down, they become frustrated. It's two or three days of absolute utter failure creating these uh, associations. A clockwork orange, perfect uh, example of classical conditioning, by the way. Here, if you remember this uh, movie from the early 70s, they had this horrible criminal, and this was a time when behaviorism was coming, uh, was at its peak, and they thought, well, we are going to cure this criminal by making him watch horrible acts, and every time he sees a horrible act, see how they kept his eyes open, we're going to give him a chemical that makes him physically sick, so that eventually criminal, clinical acts would be associated with just feelings of sickness and nausea. In that way, we would cure the criminal. Well, they found, as you'll see, that when the aversive conditioner no longer worked, that the criminal behaviors uh, re reappeared. Good movie. I would encourage you to rent that or get it and see it. So, what about you as an educator? Does everything have to be enjoyable? All right? We want to create learning that's pleasurable for our children. That's interesting. Human beings naturally want to learn. They want to find out about things. That's a pleasurable experience. So to the greatest extent possible, we want to create pleasurable, interesting 
learning experiences. And I can hear you saying, well, Andy, does everything have to be fun? And I say, unto you, no, nigh unto you. But then again, does everything have to be boring, useless, frustrating, disconnected, impersonal, contrived, or irrelevant? Does it? Does it? Certainly not. It's not one or the other, but to the greatest extent possible. We want to tap into humans' natural desire to learn, to find out, to explore their environment, to learn about things maybe that they might be interested in. So, master teachers, and that's what I want you to be someday, make learning interesting. Help children become successful. They want it to be relevant and make these personal connections to the greatest extent possible. So we use classical conditioning not to predict behavior, but to understand the forces that may shape behavior. Also understand that students or people do things for reasons. They're often reacting to conditioned responses or to stimuli. So yes, I'm a holistic educator, but I use all these learning theories to help me understand. And I use a lot of behavioristic techniques to help children. So don't think, well, I'm a holistic educator. I don't deal with that behaviorism. And I say, nonsense. Anyone is foolish if they disregard any learning theory. Master teachers are able to use cognitive learning th theory, behaviorist learning theory, humanistic learning theory, holistic learning theory, social cultural learning theory, all to help them plan learning experiences and to understand this thing called human beings.